Hi, in this video we'll be looking at the relationship between a good or service's price elasticity of demand and the total revenue that a business will be able to generate for that good or service. So this is sort of linked to the previous video that we did where we showed that on a straight line demand curve, like the one we've got on this diagram here, the elasticity will change across the demand curve. So check out that video for some more intuition, but I'll try and sort of recap to some extent in this video what we mean by that. But what this means is that by choosing a price at different points along this demand curve, a business can change how much revenue they can get. And we can actually sort of plot this relationship on a slightly unconventional graph where we actually have two graphs or diagrams that are connected to each other but we will look at that in slightly more detail going into this video but to begin with let's just look at this demand curve and sort of have a quick discussion linked to the previous video about the different elasticities along the demand curve so as we see in green we do have a demand curve here and we can we can pick out the midpoint of this demand curve as this dot in the middle where we have our price P and our quantity Q that is demanded. And at this point, we actually have unit elasticity. So our price elasticity of demand, our P E D, is equal to one at this point. And so what this means is that any percentage change in price will have an equal change in quantity demanded in percentage terms. So if we were to increase price by say 10% to P1, then this would reduce our quantity demanded by 10% as well. And that's what we mean by unit elasticity. So let me just get rid of that because this diagram will get far too messy. And okay. And as we showed in the previous video, if we were instead to start at say, here and we add say price P2 and quantity Q2, if we were here to increase our quantity by say 10%, what we'd notice is that this reduction in quantity is going to be more than 10%, it's going to be say 20% because we're at a lower point in the quantity demanded curve and clearly if you look at this distance, this is a lot more than 10% of say Q2, this distance between, if we move to say Q3 here, this is a lot more than 10%, whereas this little distance here is only say 10% of this whole distance, whereas we're talking about, so I'm not explaining it very well, but in the previous video it's a bit better explained that at this point on the curve it's elastic because a small change, say a 10% change in price here is going to have a much larger percentage change in quantity demanded. So we know that as we move up our demand curve, if I just try and get rid of some of these lines to keep this a bit more simple. There we go. There we go. Then we'll see that this point of the curve is elastic. And indeed, anything above this unit elastic point at the midpoint of the demand curve is elastic. The PED here is going to be greater than one. That's what we've defined as being elastic. And if we were to do the same exercise again, which I won't just for the sake of time, we'll see that below this unit elastic point, below the midpoint of the demand curve, this is inelastic. So here, the price elasticity of demand is between zero and one. Again, we're ignoring the minus sign, although the price elasticity is usually a negative amount. And just to finish this point, at this point right on the axis at the top, we have perfectly elastic demand. And at this point on the x-axis at the bottom, we have perfectly inelastic demand. And, and this is the case because, say, imagine we start at this price here. Let's call that P, I don't know, P4. We see that there is zero quantity demanded. So if we were to decrease our price just a little bit, We'd, in, we'd go from a price of zero to a price of some, some positive number, or not a price of zero. We go from 
a let's get rid of this. We go from a quantity demanded of zero, so a quantity of demanded was zero, and now our quantity demanded, let's say, it goes to two. Well, what percentage increase in quantity demanded is this from zero to two? It's an infinite increase in quantity demanded. So if we were going to do our PED formula, which is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price, this would be infinity over some number. Say if our change in price has changed by like minus 10%, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter like this is always going to be infinity so at the top of the curve our price elasticity is infinite so this is perfectly elastic and we can do the same exercise at the bottom of the demand curve we'll see that our price this time goes from zero to something positive when we change it so our percentage change in price will be infinite and it'll be some number over infinity so our PED there will be equal to zero so at the bottom of the demand curve we are perfectly inelastic. So let's get rid of get rid of this again. But so that, that's just the point that we're looking to make here is that the, the price elasticity of demand changes along our flat demand curve. And we saw that if we have a curved demand curve, we don't necessarily this doesn't need to be the case. And so this this we can have a constant elasticity on a curved demand curve. But we like to draw our demand curves as a straight line, so we have this relationship that we've just uh, just explained that we have elastic demand curves up here, unit elastic in the middle, and inelastic at uh, the bottom, or towards the bottom right of our demand curves. So what we're going to look to do in this video is connect this, if we make this smaller so we can fit it all in, is, yeah, we're going to link this to total revenue. So the, so we see on this top diagram we have sort of price and we have quantity on our axes but on this bottom diagram we're looking at revenue that's generated and we should hopefully know that revenue equals price times quantity so we can see how this revenue figure is linked to the axes on our high on our top diagram it is this price times this quantity and this will give us our revenue on the bottom on this y-axis and this is why these these diagrams are connected and why we have these red lines coming down here uh, to tie these diagrams together because if we think about it we can think let's think about our perfectly elastic point to begin with this point on the y-axis if we look here we can see that we have a price of P4 and we have a quantity demanded of zero. So if we sub this into our revenue equation, we're going to have our price as P4 multiplied by our quantity of zero. So clearly our revenue is equal to zero here. So on our revenue diagram at the bottom, we can see that at this point, this is tied down to zero. That's what this red line is sort of doing. It's dragging it down from the top diagram to the bottom. And so at this point, we, we're earning a revenue of zero. We have a nice high price, but not, none of the good is being demanded. So the business setting this price is making a revenue of zero. At the other end of the spectrum, we can look at this perfectly inelastic point, And we can see that the business is earning a high quantity. We can say it's earning, say, quantity Q5. But it's got a price of zero as well. So, so our revenue at this point is zero times Q5. So again, the revenue is zero. And we can see that this this point is being tied tied down to here we follow this red line down and we see that this at this quantity of production again we're earning zero revenue so this revenue curve has two points with zero revenue and we we can say that this is well we have a quantity of zero here and we we have a quantity of say q5 here and so there's zero revenue being made at these points. Either we've set a really high price and no one wants our good, or we've set up such a low price that we're not making any money from the good. And then we see that in between these two prices that we can set, we have positive revenue. And that's all of these areas on our demand curve here. All the, all the combinations of price in between, we can pick a price on our demand curve, and we can see that we have, we have say, some price some price, say P6, and some quantity, say Q6. And then our revenue will just be P6 times Q6. 
and we, we pull back down to this demand curve and we'll get some value. And it actually turns out that our revenue curve, if we do this exercise for every single point on the demand curve, which is of course infinitely many points, so we can't actually do this just by hand, but we'll find that our revenue curve looks like this semicircle sort of shape, where our revenue is increasing when we are in the elastic part of the demand curve, when we, when we price at the elastic stage, and then we get to our unit elastic point in the midpoint of the demand curve, where it's unit elastic there, and that's where we have our maximum possible revenue. And then as we increase our price further than that, our revenue will decrease. And this is why we have this sort of semicircle shape where it's increasing for small levels of quantity produced or high prices, and our revenue is decreasing for any quantities produced higher than that or any prices that are lower than that. So why, why do we have this sort of relationship in our total revenue curve? Well, here's why. Because when a good has price elastic demand, reducing the price will increase our total revenue. And we can see this using our price elasticity of demand formula. We saw that PED is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. So if our good is income elastic, or not income elastic, price elastic, this value is going to be greater than one. What this means is that a small change in price is going to give us a larger change in quantity demanded. So if we reduce our price by a little amount, we reduce our price, we're gonna have a big increase in quantity demanded. And as we said, our revenue curve is equal to price times quantity. So when we're, when we're at an elastic point in the curve, we can reduce our price just a little bit and we increase our quantity a lot. And that is going to overall increase our revenue. So as we, as we saw here, if we're in this left-hand side of our revenue curve or our demand curve, we want to reduce our price. So let's, and this is why I was getting rid of everything that was cluttering up this demand curve because I wanted to show this. If we can just get rid of this stuff. If we are at any point in our elastic side of our demand curve, it's going to increase our revenue to decrease our price. If we have a price here of say P7, we can decrease our price to P8, P8, and that will increase our revenue. And this is going to be true, and we can keep decreasing our price, decreasing our price, decreasing our price, and until we get to this unit elastic point. And once we get there, that will be our maximum revenue. So, and again, increasing our price will just do the opposite. So, that that just sort of follows from the point that reducing our price will increase our total revenue, so increasing our price will reduce it. If we increase our price, we're going to have a big reduction in quantity demanded, which is going to reduce our revenue, as we've said. And so again, so the opposite is going to be true for inelastic demand. Reducing our price will reduce total revenue. So again, if we rewrite out our price elasticity of demand equation, percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. And we know that this is going to be less than one because we are at an inelastic price elasticity of demand. So if we reduce our price, this means we're going to have a big, uh, or no, we're gonna have a small increase in quantity demanded. So we need a big, reduction in price to have any sort of change in quantity demanded because this is less than one. So the denominator is greater than the numerator. So this means that if we were if we're at an inelastic place, a we're gonna need a large reduction in price to have a small increase in quantity demanded. So if we go back to our revenue, revenue equals price times quantity. Let's see this again. We have a big reduction in price and only a small increase in quantity demanded. Well, overall, this is going to decrease 
our revenue. So in fact, when we're in an inelastic place, we want to increase our price to increase total revenue. So let's go back to our demand curve and we see that if we're at this inelastic part of the demand curve, what we want to do to increase our revenue is to increase our price. So say we're at P6 here, if we increase our price to P7, we're increasing our revenue and we keep increasing and increasing until we get to this unit elastic point. So again, our revenue is maximized when we get to our unit elastic point. And we can see this on our, on our revenue diagram that if we're at an inelastic place, we want to be increasing our price and decreasing our quantity produced until we get to this point here which is where our revenue is maximized. This point at the top of the semicircle clearly has the highest revenue at this price P. Any other price is going to give us a lower revenue. So as we say here, this is our final point. This means that total revenue is maximized at the midpoint of the demand curve where price elasticity of demand is one. So hopefully that made a bit of sense that the key, point, the key points to take away is that if we are at an inelastic point of our demand curve, we want to increase our price because increasing our price only has a small decrease in quantity demanded because our good is inelastic in terms of price. If we're at an elastic point of the curve, we want to decrease our price because a decrease in price is going to have a large increase in quantity demanded and again it's going to increase our revenue and so we keep decreasing our price when we're elastic or we keep increasing our price when we're inelastic until we get to a unit elastic point and so we're no longer needing to reduce or change our price because we're no longer in an elastic or an inelastic place we are at a unit elastic place where a change in price is just going to have the same impact so the change in price is going to equal our change in quantity demanded so changing price is not going to change our revenue because they will both change by the same amount and so our revenue will remain unchanged if we have a marginal change in price or quantity. So that's our relationship between price and quantity demanded or PED and no, it's our relationship between PED and revenue I should say and I guess one small point to note from this video is that I have sort of assumed that our aim is to maximize our total revenue and that's not necessarily the case with businesses they tend to want to maximize their profits some some businesses will just want to maximize revenue and there's various reasons for that which I won't go into but the point is that this just gives us some relationship between PED and revenue and th this is useful because knowing our elasticity allows us to know well what how we should change our price in order to change our revenue. So I hope this gave some insight into this relationship. If it did, please do leave a like rating. Make sure to check out the playlist for more videos like this one and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.